Sham was born April 9th, 1970. His mother was a daughter of Prince Quillo, like something royal. He was owned by Bull Hancock of Claiborne Farm until Hancock's death in October. Sham, along with many other horses, were sold at a dispersal sale following Hancock's death. He was bought by Sigmund and Viola Sommer and came under the care and training of Frank Pancho Martin. At this time, Sham was still a maiden, meaning he had yet to win his first race, having lost his first three. His fourth race would change things. Wait, 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 wait. Everyone in the audience is asking the same question. This is a trilogy on Secretariat. Why are we talking about Sham? Because Sham was the rival. Ow! Oh. Hello, I'm Charles. And I'm James. We love history, and we want to share our love of history with you. And today we are starting the second part in our trilogy of videos about the great racehorse Secretariat. And of course, once again today, we are joined by our sister and horse expert and in-house musician. Yeah. A lot of fun. Back to Sham. Sham's fourth race was his first under new owner and trainer. He won by six lengths on December 9th, 1972. His fifth race on New Year's Day was his first as a three-year-old. Wait a minute! I thought Sham was born in April. He, yeah. He's not quite two years old. How is he running as a three-year-old when he's not three years old? Well, officially, thoroughbred racehorses have their birthday on January 1st, no matter when they're born. So this makes it less complicated when it comes to races that can only be run by a certain age horse. So like the Triple Crown races, they can only be run by a three-year-old. By having all racehorses have their birthday on January 1st, it makes everybody the same age. It makes it less complicated. Okay. I guess that makes sense. So in this New Year's race, his fifth race, he won by 15 lengths. Sham continued winning and won all three of his next races, the last being the prestigious Santa Anita Derby in California. Well, this rising star, who started so poorly in his two-year-old season, would become one of Secretariat's biggest rivals. Think Napoleon Bonaparte versus the Duke of Wellington. Or... How about General Robert E. Lee and General Ulysses S. Grant? Like the SDSU Jackrabbits and the USD Coyotes. So <laughs> After the Santa Anita Derby, Sham's next race would be the Wood Memorial in preparation for the 1973 running of the Kentucky Derby. While Sham was winning races at the beginning of 1973, Secretary was in training at Hialeah Racetrack in Hialeah, Florida, but he wasn't racing. Christopher Chenery sadly died on January 3rd, 1973, at the age of 86. With his death came the need to consider the financial effects the inheritance tax would take. Petty knew that some of the horses would most likely have to be sold to pay this. Which horses was the question? They needed several million dollars to pay the inheritance tax. There were a total of 80 horses on the farm, including their most valuable asset, Secretariat. At the time, Secretariat was worth between five and seven million dollars. Seems like a lot of money for a horse. And his stablemate, Reva Ridge, was worth about 2.5 million dollars. Both of these values would change depending on what races they won or lost. Because naturally, if suddenly they all start, all of a sudden start losing, yeah, they're not that great a horse. I'm not going to pay that much money for him. Penny Tweedy, Christopher Chenry's daughter, did not believe that Secretary would win the Triple Crown for two main reasons. One, Reva Ridge was her golden boy. 
her heart was still now with the four-year-old cult. She also knew that many of Bull Ruler's offsprings failed to train well as three-year-olds, fizzling out in training and not being able to run the long distance required to be a top stakes winner. Not one of Bull Ruler's offspring had trained for the Triple Crown races in the past. Two, she was also worried Secretariat might break down. His running style was completely different from Reva Ridge. Reva Ridge ran in an airy, floating way. Secretariat ran hard, pounding the ground, striking out like a hammer. She worried that this strain would eventually cause problems. During a meeting discussing how to get the money they needed to pay the inheritance tax, it was recommended that Secretariat be syndicated to stand at stud at Claiborne Farm in Kentucky. It was finally decided in a second meeting that they wouldn't sell the breeding stock, but would syndicate Secretariat and play the rest by ear. Until the syndication was complete, Secretariat wouldn't race. The syndication contract stated that Secretariat would race during his three-year-old year and go to stud no later than November 15, 1973. There were 32 shares, unlike the typical 36, at $190,000 a share. One share entitled the holder to send one mare a year to Secretariat. The syndicating farm, Claiborne Farm, would get four free shares, three the first year, for basically hosting the stallion. Trainer Lucian Lauren would get one free nomination every year. This would bring Secretariat's total to 36 mares his first year and 37 thereafter. There was also an allowance for him to cover more than 37 mares a year as he got older and as long as his health continued. Ogden Phipps became the first to buy a share in Bull Ruler's greatest son, the cult he missed out on. The other shares were quickly sold, with some quickly snatching at the chance, while others just a little bit more reluctant. So Secretary was syndicated for the world record amount of six million eighty thousand dollars six hundred eighty thousand dollars more than the previous record of five point four million dollars during this time secretary was still being trained during these winter months secretary began to change a critical change can happen during the transition time between racing as a two-year-old to a three-year-old many two-year-old champions do not survive intact this transition and fizzle out in the three-year-old season. Think of it how a college football player might not be eligible for the pro leagues. Secretariat seemed to be going through this transition well and coming out as good as he was before. To his jockey, he seemed to be improving. However, Penny was still skeptical about Secretariat winning big with the longer distance three-year-old races. The Secretariat team decided to go to the Kentucky Derby by way of New York and the Wood Memorial instead of the Florida races, which was the usual springboard for Kentucky Derby hopefuls. The last time a Wood Memorial winner had won the Derby was in 1946 by assault, so this looked like a gamble. Secretariat's first three-year-old race was the Bay Shore Stakes, which he almost lost. He was boxed in and Turcotte could not get around the pack. When an opening appeared, he took off. Secretariat managed to win by four and a half lengths after only running free for an eighth of a mile. While they won, Turcotte knew he'd ridden a poor race by not taking Secretariat to the outside because he was worried Secretariat wouldn't be the same as he'd been the previous fall. But Secretariat was, and he was ready to run. His next race would be the Gotham Stakes. As Secretariat prepared for the Gotham, questions were flying around as to Secretariat winning the Triple Crown. Penny stated that Lucian was aiming the horse to reach his peak for the Triple Crown. However, Reaver Ridge was still Penny's Golden boy! Many people still believed that Secretariat would win. The Reno Turf Club made Secretariat the 6-5 choice to win the Kentucky Derby. The operator of the Future Book 
gave him 5-2 to two odds at winning the Triple Crown. Secretariat won the Gotham Stakes by three lengths, tying the track record for the mile at a minute 33 and two fifths. With this win, Penny's pessimism of Secretariat's ability dissolved, and she began to feel like he could win the Derby. Now we come back to Sham. He had been sent east to New York after his Santa Anita Derby win. He was entered to race against Secretariat at the Wood Memorial. Secretariat, however, developed a problem. In his prep for the wood, he was running slower than normal. It was discovered that he had an abscess in his mouth. It was sore and about the size of a quarter. The doctor didn't think it would bother him, but on the day of the wood, Secretariat did not want to take the bit and run. During the race, Turcotte sensed trouble as Secretariat was running differently than normal. He wasn't running against the bit and didn't respond to Turcotte's urging. He finished in third place behind Angolite in first and Sham in second. Secretary's defeat started many rumors of bone chips on his knees, bad ankles, splints, and other maladies. The abscess that was discovered had grown larger and more painful. It had to be treated. They started bathing it with hot towels hoping it would break open on its own. Secretary continued to hurt and wouldn't run like he used to. This made people question his ability to win the Derby. The week of the Derby had arrived, and with it, Secretariat started to improve. He had a sharp final workout, he was eating better, and the abscess was healing. May 5th, 1973 was Derby Day. It was the 99th running of the Derby. 13 horses went to the post that day. Sham and Angle Light were also running in the Derby. Remember, they were the horses that beat Secretariat in the wood. Of those three horses, Secretariat, Sham, and Angle Light, Angle Light had the best position. His position was two. Sham was in position four, and Secretariat was more on the outside in position ten. Angle Light and Secretariat were the three to two favorites to win, and Sham was a close second at five to two. That day, there was a betting record of $3,284,962 bet on the Derby race alone. This is not including any of the other races that were raced that day. There was trouble at the starting gate with Twice a Prince when he panicked in the gate. Turcotte kept Secretariat from being put into the gate until after Twice a Prince was reloaded. The final horse to be loaded was Goldbag and the race was seconds from starting. And they're on for the lead. On the inside, that's Angolite for the lead. On the outside, Shecky Green, Royal and Regal. Then on the rail, it's Restless Jet, followed by And of course, natives. way Up in the, the back of the pack is, is Big Red. By the stands for the first time. Yeah, he's Green, currently dead the way last. And a half. Royal and Regal now being moved to the Sham inside, isn't in front. He's is towards the, the front. Secretary is now pushing up Sham, in the back. Our native restless jet. It's my gallant. Then Forgo on the outside. Nabo followed by Secretariat. Warbucks. Secretary finally, is still hanging in the back. He doesn't make his on the move turn. until the a little is bit later. Green leading by two and a half lengths. Goldbag is second by a head. Sham now third on the outside by two lengths. Royal and Regal fourth. So the horse lengths, third back, back to on the outside. Angle just moving up fifth. now Secretary is Sham. Made a sudden move and is now yeah, Sham is now in second place jet. behind Angle Light. Our beginning to move up. Navajo, Borgo, and Warbucks beginning to move up. Followed by my gallant and twice a prince. And I into the turn and bunching I believe I just saw Secretary Green, there in that last the clip. I think he's kind of just behind this group. He's making his move he's now. Got ahead in front. now Green responds to the challenge so yeah, for there just a second, I believe I saw Royal his head. Is third and holding on. So Sham is now back. Pushing for the so lead. So there he goes. There comes Secretariat the along the outside. And now third and moving at the leaders as they come for the head of the stretch. They're at the head of the stretch and Sham is the leader. He leads it by a length. Secretariat is in the center of the so race. So yeah, just driving. see Jackie Secretary is just track. charging right forward Forgo, like our native on the outside. Now like, in the like, like, a, like, a, like a machine, basically. Yeah. He's just going. Sham look look how second. Sham it's and Secretary are just leaving the pack half. behind. But Secretary especially, he's just like walking away with it, basically. Yeah. 
and earlier you could see Sh Sham's jockey just trying to get Sham to go just a little bit further. Get him, get that final boost of speed. Encourage him. You're not going to lose to this horse. And so now secretary is the unofficial winner in the derby. They take time, they go over the videos, and make sure nothing went wrong, and then they're declared the official winner. Like, for example, a couple of years ago, I don't remember exactly how many, but a horse, the winner of the Kentucky Derby got disqualified because he bumped a horse. Due to interference. Yes. It has to be a clean win without interference. Can lead and Secretariat. Ron Turcott uses the right handed whip twice, you see it there. And now Secretariat comes on to take the see, lead. Away. You can see Sham's Pindai jockey. Is also in a strong drive, oh, but he's whipping this horse and trying to push him. So using the whip to away, encourage him to keep him moving. The but line. if you look, the margin better if you kind of look real close, you can kind of see that Ronnie isn't derby, using his whip. He's handwriting, which means he's urging him with his hands. So which means Secretariat. Secretariat is not needing that extra Sham urging. Finishing the rest of the field very easily, much the best of the rest. Secretariat's times for the Derby were astounding. He ran each quarter mile faster than the previous quarter. He also broke the Derby record and finished the one and one quarter mile race in one minute, 59 seconds and two fifths with an average speed of 37.69 miles per hour and this record still holds to this day no horse has been able to beat that record in the first quarter secretariat averaged 35.71 miles per hour in the second 37.5 in the third 37.82 in the fourth 38.46 and the fifth quarter, an astounding 39.13 miles per hour. Nearly 40 miles an hour. After the spectacular win, Penny said, Well, that's one bold ruler that can go the distance. Turcotte privately believed the Secretariat was the best horse he'd ever ridden. Secretariat's win over Sham did not convince Sham's trainer, Poncho, that Secretariat was better than Sham. Both horses would go to Baltimore for the Preakness States. Despite Poncho's belief that Sham was better, people were saying that Secretariat would win the Triple Crown. Alright, I don't have a hat for this one, but we're going to go anyway. The 98th running of the Preakness was on May 19th. It must have been an exciting day with hopes for a Triple Crown winner running high. Predictions were made that Secretariat would run the fastest Preakness ever, like he'd done in the Derby. On Monday, a reporter from the Washington Star News predicted that he would run the race in 1 minute 53 and 2 fifth seconds. The track record was 1 minute 54. Sham's jockey, Pin K, wasn't as confident about the Colt's ability to win the Preakness as he had been about the Derby, but felt the Colt had improved and still had a chance to win. Six horses went to the post that day. Three of them had not run in the Derby. Sham was in post position one, and Secretariat was in post position three. While Pin K might not have been as confident, Turcott was. He was more confident than ever about Secretariat's ability to win. So this is right as the race is about to start. The horses are all loading in. They don't always load in order, order but they just work their way through, getting the horses loaded as quickly as possible to keep the horses from getting distracted. Because naturally, just like humans, like the last thing you want is to lose your... We'll complete the field uh, that cutting edge the focus. Yes, that focus. That's the word. Focus. So they typically don't wait long in the gate before. Oh, there they go. So watch Secretariat. He's kind of in the middle. He's lagging towards the back. He's not staying quite as far back as normal, but then it's also a smaller field. Yeah. But check out who's in last place. His favorite running style. 
Secretariat is last again as they move into the first I do turn. like that horse name, Deadly Dream. Coley Taj has it by two lengths. Torsion second by a length. And then there Shane Secretary Burns. is. He's starting to come move up already. Right now. But here comes Secretary. You can really he's see him. He's coming along the outside. the outside. He's you look close. You see, look for the blue right and white silk. Yeah. The one that looks like the, the one that the horse that looks like it's running and making the other horses look like they're only cantering. Yes, the one who's blazing down the track. And fun fact, in the movie Secretariat, they actually use this footage for this race. It might not have been this exact footage because I'm sure different, um, yeah. different companies, uh, film studios would record it, but I do believe that they they use actual footage of the race. It's cheaper than re rewriting it. So now Sham, Sham is in second place back there and Secretariat up front. So they're coming around that final turn. Sham is actually catching up to Secretariat. And once again, you see the whip on Sham. He's pushing, trying to get that horse to move. And Ronnie is not using it. Ronnie's handwriting. See right there, it says Ronnie has his whip put away because Ronnie knows he doesn't need it. Secretariat's going. You can hear the roar of the crowd. There's like, he's done it. And so now Sham put up a good fight here. Yes, he did. I, I think he put up a better fight here than in the Derby. Secretary would win the Preakness by two and a half lengths, which you can see in this picture here. Sham came in second again and was eight lengths ahead of the third place horse, our native. Turcotte's early move going around the first turn was unexpected, and some were worried that Secretary would tire before the finish. But Turcott didn't even have to go for the whip to keep Secretariat going. The time for the race was registered at 1 minute 55 seconds for the 1 and 3 16th race. Many people disputed this time saying the time had to be wrong. Some stated that they timed the race at 1 minute 53 and 2 fifths a second. Another claimed it was 1 minute 54 and 2 fifths. Many were sure that he'd beaten the previous record. It was not until 2012 that after a three hour meeting and analysis of several other races, Secretariat's time was changed to 1 minute 53 by a unanimous vote. This broke the 2012 record of 1 minute 53 and 2 fifths seconds for the Preakness. With this change in Secretariat's final time, his average speed for the race was 37.83 miles per hour. The Triple Crown seemed within reach, but the longest race, the Belmont Stakes, was still to be run. Many horses had won the first two races, but failed to win the Belmont. The $190,000 price tag that had been put on Secretariat's breeding rights in the syndication now seemed cheap. Lucian stated that they should have charged $250,000. In our third part in this trilogy, we will finish our three-part saga of this great athlete and see if he does win the Triple Crown. So stay tuned for the final video that will be released on the 50th anniversary of the 1973 running of the Belmont Stakes. And so, until our next adventure, see you later. The 98th running of the Preakness was on May 19th. It must have been an ex... Phone. Toll free! Pick it up and hang it up! <laughs>